June 12th, 2012, will be a day to celebrate. Indeed, this will be my 20th year anniversary of my liver transplant. Celebrating 20 years of a successful transplant is an unprecedented accomplishment. In case you don't know my story, let me tell it for you. I was born with an aggressive autoimmune disorder. Initially, it took the form of ulcerated colitis, and since kindergarten, I have suffered the tremendous pains, discomfort, and frustrations that come with this disease. Frequently, it would lead to hospitalization and kept me from being able to fully enjoy my childhood. Then, as I was concluding middle school, I started to experience severe and unexplained itching, coupled with extreme fatigue. Thinking it was probably some sort of allergy, we treated it as such until the point where it became unbearable. Then one day, I casually mentioned my symptoms to my GI doctor. He became immediately alarmed. He ordered a number of tests that confirmed his suspicions. My autoimmune disorder had now moved to my liver bile ducts. In 1991, they finally diagnosed me with having primary sclerosing cholangitis. There was no cure, and by the time I received this diagnosis, my condition was so severe that none of the treatment options would be effective. The only hope for me at that time was a liver transplant. My parents' insurance deemed liver transplantation experimental, thereby refusing to cover it. Family and friends launched a citywide effort to help raise money for the surgery and aftercare. They even organized a fundraising march they called the Ben Hummel Walkathon. It was a huge hit, and by that fall, I was finally allowed to be listed. During the waiting process, my health continued to decline. When the call arrived in March 1992, I was more than eager to remove this bad liver out of me and get on with my life. Unfortunately, things do not always go according to plan. My body never took the first transplant. Within months, my health greatly deteriorated. My body filled up with fluid, which infiltrated through my diaphragm and into my lungs. I received frequent and painful lung taps to drain the fluid off. Because I had no working liver, my body could not process the ammonia that is naturally released when digesting protein. Finally, the doctor saw no reason to keep me at the hospital. There was nothing else they can do for me. They sent me home. The only hope for survival was another liver transplant. June 12th, 1992. The second call came. This time, my body accepted the liver. By the following summer, I was catching up with the life I missed for several years. As was mentioned, PSC is not a disease of the liver, but of the immune system. One night in 1999, right after I graduated from college, I became deathly ill, I had to be rushed to the ICU. A bad PSC flare-up put me back into the hospital. The solution the hospital gave me was to drain my liver with an external tube and to put me back on the transplant waiting list. While this is disturbing news, it wasn't uncommon. I was told back in 1992 that due to the nature of PSC, the average life for a transplanted liver is 10 years. Around the 10 year mark, I would probably need another liver. So once again, I was placed on the transplant waiting list. I lived two years with these tubes in my side. I could not swim, bathe, or go surfing. Frequently, they became infected, causing me to be hospitalized. Cherish, however, was not content to just leave me like this. Due to the research that she and her mom conducted, we counterattacked the PSC through a balanced combination of new medicines, a strong healthy diet, exercise, and a ton of milk thistle. It was not an overnight success. Through the years, I have seen the inside of a hospital room more times than I care to recount. Eventually, the external liver tubes did come out, shocking the doctors who assumed I would exist with them until my next liver transplant. While not stopping PSC, we have slowed it to a manageable point, allowing me to continue life with this current liver. Lasting an additional 13 years, I will celebrate the 20 year anniversary of my second transplant this coming June. This truly is a miracle. 
Cherish and I are so thankful to God for every new day he has given us and thankful for all the support we have received from friends and family over the years. As artists, when it came time to name our company, we decided to focus back on our gift of life. We came up with the name Painting for Life. While life has its dark moments, we choose to focus on the positive through our work. Our goal is to create art and visuals that encourage and bring joy to people. Our mission is simple. We are dedicated to illuminating life and celebrating the joy within. The art created through Pain for Life remind one of the delightful images of Norman Rockwell. They are slices of life, the beautiful moments we treasure. Life is short. We know this firsthand. We invite you to celebrate life with us. Check out our artwork at www.paintingforlife.com. Sign up to receive our monthly easing where we talk about our art. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash paintingforlife. Support our cause by purchasing a box of cards or a print. Proceed from everything sold goes to help others around the globe find beauty in their life. For those of you who have known my story and wish to help me celebrate this great milestone, please join me Thursday, May 17th, 7 o'clock at the Liver Life Walk event at City Park in Denver, Colorado. Come and rejoice in this truly remarkable accomplishment. Thank you.